But first, a years-long economic crisis in Venezuela has that country in a steep downward spiral. Violence rocked the nation earlier this year as President Nicolas Maduro pushed through controversial political changes. Maduro has come in for tough criticism from President Trump and some Latin American leaders. Through it all, rates of hunger and crime have skyrocketed. In a rare interview, Maduro sat down with NewsHour special correspondent Ryan Chilcoat at an energy summit today in Moscow. President Trump has upped his criticism of you and your administration since uh, the creation of the Constituent Assembly. And I want to read you a quote uh, from President Trump that he made. Uh, a statement that he made at the General Assembly. He said, the Venezuelan people are starving and their country is collapsing. Their democratic institutions are being destroyed. The situation is completely unacceptable and we cannot stand by and watch. As far as I know, Mr. President, you haven't spoken with President Trump. If you do, what will you say to him and what would you say now to the American people? Al pueblo norteamericano, nosotros siempre le decimos la verdad. I would say to the U.S. people the truth, and we have always done so. Venezuela wants only one thing, respect. The time of U.S. interference in the social and political life of Latin America and the Caribbean should be left behind. Venezuela is the object of desire of ruling circles in Washington for two reasons. Our riches, the riches of our country. We have the largest proven reserves of oil in the world. We have growing reserves of natural gas. We are number eight in terms of gas reserves in the world, and these reserves are growing, because on top of oil, we are also exploring some gas deposits. Now, Venezuela raised the flag of a new model of waking up the peoples on our continent, but they want to suppress this idea, this example. It's not just about Trump, because Trump is reading his notes. He doesn't even know where Venezuela is on the map. He doesn't even know where Puerto Rico is. He did not know that. He went to Puerto Rico, and he came there during the tragedy and insulted them. These are our brothers. If you say to him, Simon Bolivar, he thinks that's a rocker, a singer. He doesn't know who that is. He repeats what the Pentagon writes for him. My voice will never shut up, and my voice will be loud always, with or without Trump. Trump is rude. He is telling me he's going to deal with us and end us. But even with Trump, Venezuela will keep moving forward and will fight for this destiny. I'd like to ask you about that. President Trump has not ruled out military action in Venezuela. Do you take that threat seriously? This is a forum on energy. <laughs> of course, we can discuss other types of energy, spiritual energy. Let's take a look at this. The president of the largest, the most powerful military power in the world has no right to joke or not be serious. The people of Venezuela are rebellious people. We fight for our freedom. And of course, we have certain threats. Venezuela has no weapons of mass destruction. We have no nuclear weapons, no strategic weapons. We have no significant armed forces or military places abroad. We are a modest country in this sense. And all of a sudden, Trump threatens to attack Venezuela by military force. Of course, all Latin America and Caribbean countries oppose that. And I think the U.S., despite anything, they will have some minimum common sense. Venezuela has one of the largest collections of Russian arms in the region. Amidst this threat of intervention, you're here in Moscow. Will you be or are you asking President Putin for military assistance and more weapons? As for this Russian assistance, yes. We do have. Russia supports us. Thank goodness there is such a leader in the world, a true leader with a fast-growing economy like Vladimir Putin. He holds high the flag of peace, dignity. You are asking for more military assistance, in a word. We have enough. What we have is enough. But at the same time, there are new arrangements that are coming up, even if we don't ask for it. We are going to be given even more support to defend our sovereignty and our defense capabilities. According to some statistics, in 2016, around three-quarters of Venezuelans lost an average of 19 pounds because there's not enough food. What are you going to do to solve that problem? Venezuela is still at important positions in spite of the crisis, in spite of the drop in the oil prices, in spite of the domestic trade and economic war that some entrepreneurs fight against us. Venezuela is investing more than 60 percent of its available resources in quality-based education and health care. Sixty-five percent of students in the country receive free and good quality public education. Are you saying that there is no food crisis in Venezuela? 
I never heard this. Who was saying this? Venezuela is facing a global mass media campaign against it. They've been saying Venezuela has so many problems that he probably deserves an intervention. And people said Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. Well, let's do an intervention to get rid of this WMD. Let's get the bad guy. The Caribbean Stalin, as probably some people think. Let's get Mr. Maduro, and that would be the end of problems. This is a global campaign. As you know, there are concerns about the treatment of journalists. Journalists have been attacked. They have been kicked out of the country. They have been allowed not. They've been uh, barred from coming in the country. And there are concerns, as you know, about political violence in Venezuela and the question of whether there are going to be elections, presidential elections, in 2018. Can you give us a guarantee that journalists will be given access to Venezuela, that there will be presidential elections in 2018, and that uh, demonstra demonstrations and protesters will be treated with dignity and without violence? Bueno, nosotros hemos sufrido durante este año, el mes de abril, mayo, junio y julio. In April, May, June, and July of this year, we had attacks from the ultra-right movements. No government in the world, I think, would be tolerant of this tight situation and risky situation. So we had to live through very difficult times. This also coincided with the coming to power of the Trump administration and the right-wing powers in the U.S. And there were some spots of violence in Venezuela across the country. And those spots of violence were fueled by journalists and global mass media. The opposition of Venezuela was claiming that we need intervention to stop this violence. Now, if we ever had even one case of a reporter who was not allowed to come and get accreditation in the country, maybe this would have been seen as a violation of our national legislature. But this is probably because of the libel and distortions that were spread by such mass media. Now, from April to July, if we never had any reports in the major newspapers of the world about violence, maybe we would not have had such violence. Mr. President, I suspect we could go on all day. This has been a very interesting conversation, but I think we're going to need to wrap it up there. I would like to thank you and please thank uh, the President of Venezuela for joining us today. I thank you and thank you on behalf of PBS NewsHour. It's been uh, interesting speaking with you, sir. Bueno, muchas gracias a todos. Gracias. Thank you very much. Expansiva.